These guys are probably tired of not having any Yuzuko problems solved. I know Yuzuko Crash Versus are good and all, but we really haven't been doing the actual stuff. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be going back to the, my very first video. I don't know whether my very first video. One of my very first videos, a Yuzuko walkthrough. We're actually going to go through a whole problem together, and we're going to solve it from scratch. So just in case you forgot, the reason I make these videos is because... I want to show you guys how my thought process works when I approach a problem because I'm going to do these problems for the first time and I want to show you guys what I think and how it works out and how I get to the answer. So, let us begin with the Yusuko 2017 January Contest Silver! Secret Cow Code. Dude, I wish I had a secret cow code. Then I could communicate with all farmers on cows and they would just tell me the answer to all these problems. Then I wouldn't even have to know any algorithm. Bruh. Well, I guess we got to do what, what we got, huh? Anyways, the cows are experimenting with secret codes and have devised a method for creating an infinite length string to be used as part of one of their codes. Bruh, infinite what? Given a string s, let f of s be s followed by s rotated one character to the right. In a right rotation, the last letter of s rotates around and becomes the first character. Given an initial string s, the cows build their infinite length code string by repeatedly applying f. Each step therefore doubles the length of the current string. Okay, given the initial string and an index n, please help the cows compute the character at the nth position in the infinite code string. Alright, so basically in our input we're given the string followed by n, and then the string contains at least 30 uppercase characters, at most 30 uppercase characters, and n is less than or equal to 10 to the 18. Dang, that's like one fat number. So we had to use a long long in C++ because 10 to the 18 is just fat, fat numbers. And then we gotta output what the character is. Okay, so this doesn't seem too bad, right? Okay, so let's let's just write it out. So basically, we have sample input. This is how you always approach a problem. You always look at the sample input first, and then see whether you can like find any patterns from that. So we're given cow, right? And then we're given that there's an eight, and we want the eight thing in our final string. So basically, if we look at our string, what happens if we apply f of s the first time? We do f of cow. Then we have to add in cow rotated one to the right. So that means the W goes to the front and then we do CO. And then if we apply F again, then we get like this whole thing rotated. So then it becomes O and then C O W W C. So let's just divide this up. Okay. And then if we apply it again, then we have to add like a C and then the whole thing over again except the C because this C over here goes all the way to the front. Okay, so can we see a pattern here? Okay, so let's see how often that C occurs. So C occurs in the first spot, it occurs in... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's just number this. Maybe maybe numbering this will help. Let's see. Okay, you guys are probably tired of this nasty purple. Let's try a different color. Okay, red. Okay, so we numbered all the things, and now let's see whether we can find a pattern in terms of the letters. I have a feeling that this is going to be like a math problem that involves like taking the remainder of stuff because... I don't know, it just seems like a mathy problem. And I like mathy problems because that means less coding, more algorithms. Okay, okay, so first let's look at C. C occurs at 1, 5, 8, 12, uh, what else? 13, 14, and then 18, 21, and that's it. So we know that our string went like 3, 6, 12, 24, right? So let's see, in the 3, so in the first three, it starts off in the first place, right? So this is like the first three. But then when we duplicate a six, it moves over to the five. But then when we duplicate those two things to the next to the next twelve, then it becomes eight and twelve. And then when we duplicate the whole thing over again, those four things translate to another thing, and then stuff happens, and that's confusing. Well, so basically, let's let's see, let's see if we could figure out O oh, just by looking at like. It's first number. So it starts at a 2, right? So we duplicate the 2. So we duplicate the first 3 and then shift over. So it becomes the third one and the second 3, which would be 6. And then this whole thing gets duplicated. So 6 goes to 1, and then 2 goes to 3. And then you gotta add 6 to that. So you go 7, and then 3 plus 6 is 9. And then we duplicate that, all four of those O's, we duplicate them and then shift everything to the right. Okay, so 2 gets duplicated. We shift it to the right to 3 and then we add 12 because we have 12 right now. So we get to 3. 12 plus 3 is not... What? Bruh. Okay, 12 plus 3, 15. Then 12 plus 7, 19. 12 plus 8, 20. 12 plus 
12 plus 10 is 22. And then W just fills in everything up. All right, so what can we notice from this? Huh, this seems like kind of hard to draw a pattern from. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold up. Do we even have to find a pattern? What happens if we go backwards, huh? Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, let's say that we're theoretically going for the letter at 8, right? So you know that the first three is cow, and then there's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So you're at 8, right? And you know that it's not in the 6, but it's in the 12. Because you go 3, 6, 12. So, it has to be in the 12, right? But we could find out where it came from the 6. Because we know that it rotated right. So let's, let's draw a divider, right? So basically you know that to the right of this is a duplication of this first part except it's rotated right. So basically, we know that this over here just came from this over here. Since the C would get duplicated and then shifted over into the 8. So that's how we get that immediately. But why don't we do like a bigger thing? So let's say we're trying to find 11, right? It would be this one over here. But we know that it comes from the previous 6, this over here, but it was shifted over to the right. So it comes from actually comes from this one over here because we duplicated over here, it goes to here, and then we shifted over one. All right, but we don't know what this one is yet because we don't know, we haven't filled it out yet. So then we again divide this into three. So there's three and we want to find what this one is. So we go look in the previous three and then we take the last one because this one will get shifted over here and then shifted over to the right, but then it gets cut off. So it goes to the front and it gets to our thing over here, which then goes over here and then goes over here. Holy moly. So our 11 would be W just like we thought. Holy, this is pretty big brain strategy. Okay, so basically our strategy, just in terms of words, is we go backwards. We start with our thing, we look at what produced it from the previous, and then look at what produced that from the previous until we get to the beginning. And the reason why this isn't too slow is because we're basically dividing by two each time, then we divide by two again. So it's basically just log of 10 to the 18, which is plenty of time. We could do that pretty fast. So let's just do that. Alrighty, so first thing first, we define our variables. Okay, so, we're dividing by 2 each time, right? So this kind of lends itself to recursion. So we're basically going to make a method. So it's basically going to be car car at int n. Alright, let's just make a k for making this simple. So we know that the one at 11 is the same as the one at 4 is the same as the one at 3. So we also pass in the total. So if our k is greater than total over 2, so if it's on this half, then we know that we have to move it over. But if it's on this half, then we just divide total by 2, and then we repeat the process again. However, if it's greater than total over 2, meaning it's on the other side, then we got a little bit of a problem. Then we gotta move it over to the other side, and then shift it over to the left. So let me go through the 11 example again, so that we can see. So first, we subtract 6 from this one. So 11 minus 6 gives us 5, so we go over here. But then we also have to go over one more, because like we rotate right, right? We don't just straight up duplicate stuff, we rotate right as well. So we have to rotate the opposite if we're gonna work backwards. And then how do we get to this one? We basically go back over and then we rotate left again. But this time we rotate off. So then we just go back around and we go to W and that's what we want. So we subtract total over two, then we subtract one. And if it's over the edge, then we add back the total. So what I'm doing right here is exactly the same thing. But now we need a base case, because right now everything is just recursive. So when do we do a base case? Is once we get to our total is just our length of our string. If total equal equals s dot length, then we just return s and then k. Epic. So basically how do we find our total? We basically start from three, we multiply by two to get six, and then we multiply by two to get 12, and once we're past our n, which is 11, we're good. And then we just see out our car at n comma i. Let's test it. Wait a minute. I did something wrong. Okay, let's see what happens. So we pass in our 8, right? And we pass in our total, which should be 12. So we do 8 and 12. If 12 is equal to length, it's not. We return sk, no. If k is less than total over 2, which is 6, then we do this, but no. So, we return k minus 1, which is 7, mod total over 2, which is 6. 
which is one, and the sixth. Oh, wait, wait, this base case is wrong because if it's one through three, any of those numbers are fine. So as long as it's less than s dot length, we're good. So if k is less than s dot length, then we return it as k. Cal a. Wait, we got more problems coming up here. Okay, let's see. So then we go to one, one comma six, and then it goes over here. Oh shoot, because n is not an index, so we have to like subtract one. Yeah, we have to subtract one from n because we're doing it based on the index of the thing. So we go from zero to seven, it goes from one to eight. So, so we gotta do n minus one. Okay, that works. Let's try our 11 example. Good. One more. Epic. Very cool. Let's see, count off C. Oh my god, we did it! Okay, let's make sure we could turn this in. So we first do cool stuff. Okay, what do we gotta do? Okay, let's add in our F ins and F outs and then we're ready to submit. Alright, let's download it and submit. Alright, the moment of truth. Farmer John, accept my humble offering. Let's go. Alright. What? Hey, very nice. We finally did it! I'm sorry it cut off like that, but like... I got really triggered when I saw the time thing, and I finally realized after like a very long time that I forgot to change everything to long longs. Dude, the problem literally says long long in C++, I'm trolling. So anyways, I changed it to long longs as you can see here, and it worked. Very nice. Thank you so much for watching, hope you guys learned something new about how I solve problems, and I think this was a pretty intense problem. I mean, the algorithm itself wasn't hard, but like, it was a pretty cool idea, not gonna lie. If you guys want any more of these crash words, just let me know down in the comments, leave likes, whatever. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and see you guys next time.